Welcome everyone to Defending Our Children. We have on board with us today, Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. He is one of the biggest names in our national security. Field. He's been the Director of Intelligence at uh, JSOC, Joint Special Operations Command. He's been the Director of the DIA, Defense Intelligence Agency. He's got two sons, which we're going to talk about, you know, parenthood and fatherhood, because uh, this is all about defending the children and empowering them for what they're facing today. And he's also co-authored a book with a friend of mine, Boone Cutler, entitled a Citizen's Guide to Fifth Generation warfare. What is fifth generation warfare? We're going to unpack that, talk about that a little bit today. You've got one of the world's most foremost experts on the topic. Uh, General Flynn, sir, welcome to the show. We appreciate your time and we look forward to this conversation. Uh, thanks, Craig. And thanks to all of you guys for being patient and getting me in to your show. There's been a lot of uh, news about children lately, particularly because of the madness going on across our southern border. And, you know, what revelation recently that our Department of Homeland Security is missing. They're lost 85,000 children. You know, Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security, they don't have a good answer for that. And they'll tell you that they're in these, these homes or these places. You know, one of the things that people don't know about that is that some of the sponsors aren't even here in the United States. We are paying for every single bit of it. And some of these sponsors that are sponsoring children that are supposed to be in our country, and they probably are, they're probably just as, you know, enslaved someplace. The sponsors are not even here in the country. So we're, we're in this crazy time. And I, anytime that I can talk about the challenges with the children across our country, not just that are coming in illegally, but also the families. We have to raise the bar on uh, the moral standards that we will no longer accept, right? I mean, we, we've got to raise the moral standards of this country. Wait a minute, sir. Are you suggesting that we stand up with righteous conviction and denounce that which is harmful for our nation? If those who love enough, those with the compassion enough for the defenseless stand up and protect. Those who love enough defend. And it won't do that we have elected officials, federal agencies, and employees that are turning a blind eye to industrial scale harm to our little ones. Everything, yeah. General, that I fought to defend against seems to be happening here now. It feels like a betrayal to me personally by some of our federal agencies that are turning a blind eye. And even we're learning evidence that are complicit and the, the facilitation of what essentially legally plays out to be child trafficking. They are taking yeah. unaccompanied minors and trafficking them, transporting them deeper into the United States. And they don't know who a lot of these sponsors are or where they are. And some of these children are coming across the border with addresses pinned to their underwear without their yeah. parents. And the address goes to a safe house in, in Miami, a, an apartment that dozens of other adults say that they're going to as their permanent residence here. I tell you, you know, it's, and, and I, I hate to even bring this example up, but it needs to be said because people need to understand the reality, the disgusting reality of, of what's happening. You know, this one child, apparently young girl, apparently very recently discovered, and I think her age was like eight or 10, but she's a very, very young age that the girl was was at, you know, so forgive me for not knowing the exact age, but it was a very young age. And she had 60, I think it was 67 different samples of DNA, of male DNA in her body. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what you, uh, unless you believe in Satan and Satan worship, you can't be a human being and think that that's fine. That's okay. That it, this is what our CBP, this is what the people at the border are discovering. Even thinking about that just, it makes me beyond angry. And it's like, you say, to yourself, oh my God, all you really want to do is if you have a child or if you have a grandchild, like I have grandchildren, you, all you want to do is you want to go find them and hug them and hold them and then say to yourself, oh my God, how can anybody do this to a child, right? And I also want to say something that I think was profound that you said earlier, or you said, those who love enough defend. And I think that's a really, really powerful, powerful statement. And I've always said that we don't go overseas and fight our enemies because we hate our enemies. We go overseas and fight our enemies because we love our country. We love our children. We Those who love enough defend. And I think that that is a powerful, powerful statement of testimony. You know, we don't fight enemies overseas because we hate. We fight enemies overseas because we love. And that's that love is to defend our way of life. It's to defend our brother 
brothers and sisters. It's to defend our families. It's to defend the children, you know, that we have maybe, or the children of the next generation or the generation after them. It's to defend the future. When we talk about the future, it's not some future that I might have. It's the future of children. It's the future of the, you know, when you look around, I'm in the place that I'm at right now, there's a, there's all kinds of people that, that work in and out of this, you know, this area. And I see, you know, they bring in their kids and I always mess around with their kids, you know, we tease or we play games or whatever, you know, and I see them in the hallways or whatever, you know, and my own kid, I can't wait to see my grandchildren because I love them. I'm not sitting here thinking to myself how much I hate something over somewhere else, or even what I said earlier, I love humanity, but I hate the behavior of humans that do things to children. All that said, Craig, I, I think that the other aspect of this is people that must be held accountable inside of our government that are responsible for things that have to do with children. Child Protective Services, everybody involved in law enforcement that I can tell you, I mean, our, our great, great men and women that, that serve in law enforcement, you know, I've seen them do so many things to protect children and put themselves in harm's way to protect them. The forces down on the borders, our border patrol, you know, the immigrations and customs. I, I've seen them in action over my years. And frankly, in the last year, I've been down on the border a couple of times and seen them in action. You know, you see how much care they take when they run into these, particularly children, because children are so vulnerable. And it, they're not doing it because they hate the illegals coming across. They do it because they see something in themselves and they see something, especially in the children. And it's partly because they love what they're doing. They love, you know, being responsible for protecting people.